Hello, everybody, and welcome to uh, this latest online webinar, uh, Exploring the UGV Market for the Next 10 Years. I've got uh, with me today uh, Melanie Rovery in London. She's the editor of Jane's Unmanned Ground Vehicles, and I've got uh, Derek Maple, who's the principal analyst and heads up our Unmanned Systems product in our Markets Forecast Suite. My name is Nick Brown. I am one of the uh, research and analysis directors here at Jane's, um, and uh, I'm, I'm very pleased that we uh, are going to be covering this really fascinating subject today in, in quite a lot of detail. Starting up with the, uh, the presentation, we're going to be moving on to, uh, to Melanie, who will give you a, a brief introduction to it all, and then she'll move on to uh, handing over to Derek, who will run you through um, the market's view of, uh, of what's going on with unmanned ground vehicles. Thank you very much, Nick. Hello, everyone. My name is Melanie Rovery, and as Nick mentioned, I'm the editor of Unmanned Ground Vehicles. I'll be giving a brief overview of the content and themes that we're going to be covering in today's briefing. Derek Maple will be starting with a look at the UGV market and where it currently stands. He will be explaining where we have come from and where the market looks like it is likely to be heading in the next 10 years, from 2017 to 2026. He will describe some of the key players in terms of UGV producers, as well as the countries that are operating the platforms. He will also draw your attention to some of the major US programs that are currently underway. I will then highlight some of the key UGV developmental trends, looking at some of the technology and how UGVs and these technologies are likely to evolve. Following this, I will be providing an overview of the US Army's Training and Doctrine Command, TRADOC, Robotic and Autonomous Systems, RAS Roadmap, that was published in March 2017. The document describes some of the technologies and advancements intended for the next 20 or so years. I will also, also likely um, touch on the development of UGVs and their surrounding technologies. Lastly, I will finish up with some key takeaways. I'm going to cover the UGV market, uh, its size, composition, and forecast trends. But before I start, I would like to cast our mind back and to a journey so far where we have arrived at in the current state of robotics. Let's look at this progression through time. Back to 1495, when before he began, began work on The Last Supper, Leonardo da Vinci designed the first humanoid robot. But it took many centuries before the advanced concepts of Leonardo began to take practical effect. In 1801, Joseph Jacquard built an automated loom that was controlled with punch cards, and in 1822, Charles Babbage demonstrated a prototype of his difference engine to the Royal Astronomical Society. Uh, this shows the total scope of James Market's forecast, of which the UGV forecast is just one element. I think it's important just to dwell on the fact here that we have 85,000 records in the total uh, forecasting system, and uh, some uh, 22,000 programs covered. So this is an immense database forecast. Next slide, please. This shows the defense and security market for UGVs over the 10-year period, 2017 to 26. Despite the recent past reduction in demand caused by the drawdown in Iraq and Afghanistan, U.S. resets and upgrades are underway, and there are defined programs for replacement of inventory, including the Idris Increment 1, the Acrisi program, the MTRS Increment 2, Robotic Wingman, and the Squad Multipurpose Equipment Transport. The global market is developing, and nations are expanding their capabilities with strong potential for the replacement of the current generation UGVs, which is driving a potential for double-digit total growth. For example, the UK MOD Project Starter program is now in a demonstration phase, with first deliveries scheduled for the middle of 2018. All 56 EOD UGVs are due to be delivered and in service by the end of 2020. Over the last 12 months, the Russian Federation has come to the fore in combat UGV development and is in the process of fielding these systems. For example, the Platform M 
which is a heavily armored multi-role combat UGV, is now in service with the Russian Special Forces units of the Central Military uh, District. James Defence Equipment and Technology Intelligence Center. This area consists of reference products which contain equipment and in technology profiles that provide detailed program and technical data and information on tens of thousands of equipment and technology platforms, weapons and systems in service and under development globally. The Intel Center also features a number of annual reviews, forward-looking analysis and special reports that examine key issues that affect the defense landscape. Daily insight into developments of the industry is also available from user and insight teams. UGVs are an emerging technology that is constantly evolving, advancing and expanding. UGVs used to be siloed and mission specific, however have always been used to carry out tasks that are repetitive, dirty and dangerous. When they were used in Afghanistan, UGVs were operated solely for either an EOD or reconnaissance surveillance role, but now modular payloads can be swapped in and out depending on the mission and requirement. This has produced a trend of UGVs gravitating towards being much more modular in nature. A modular architecture allows for rapidly changing technology such as autonomy to deliver supplies without the need for a safety driver. ISR operations are a very human-centric process. These operations are about collecting and providing information to human operators who in turn are required to make specific decisions regarding various courses of action in their theatre of operations. Alleviating some of this decision-making from humans will surely be a benefit. By removing humans from the process ensures that faster decisions can be made. UGVs do not get hungry or tired. UGVs can go into standby mode until required, which makes them ideal for use in covert situations where a human would not be able to endure long lengths of time. Autonomous vehicles can be capable of operating for much longer periods than a crewed system can. For a ground vehicle performing a mission such as Overwatch, the endurance can be measured in days or weeks instead of hours. As previously mentioned, current UGVs are modular in nature, with mission sets being swapped in and out depending on the requirement. This function alleviates the warfighter to keep them from harm's way by extracting combat casualties. By providing small units with a semi-autonomous CASBAT capability, this should stop combat medics by, from putting themselves at risk to get to and extract the wounded and thus also becoming casualties. The UGV needs to be able to carry out the extraction at least as fast as a human performing the same function and still be able to keep the same performance, i.e. travel at the same speed and have the same maneuverability. The medical mission payload will need to incorporate a manipulator arm which is capable, capable of lifting, dragging and carrying a 136 kilogram casualty as well as the mission payload module. This slide focuses on the long-term goals of the US Army's RAS document, which covers the period 2031 to 2040. Despite the recent past reduction in demand caused by the drawdown in Iraq and Afghanistan, US resets and upgrades are underway, and there are defined programs for replacement of inventory in the long term and over the 10-year period, 2017 to 2026. The US will still account for around a third of the end user market. However, the global market is developing and nations are expanding their capabilities with strong potential for the replacement of current generation UGVs, which is driving a potential for double digit total growth. The Russian Federation has come to the fore in combat UGV development and is in the process of building these systems and is rapidly achieving strong unmanned capability. And likewise, China has many programs of all types in development, but these offer limited prospects for non indigenous suppliers. Although the UGV market is still at the very early stages of its life cycle, the future scope is immense with the potential for UGVs to become more and more integrated into future operations. The US has set out its plans with much of the focus being on enhanced situational awareness as well as automation, whether that be automating convoys, air supplies, improving maneuvers and routes or lightening the load. Autonomous resupply is a major capability requirement a number of systems have been developed, tested and evaluated to not only augment man logistics, but also independently conduct tactical resupply to four deployed units. The main capabilities to be included will be focused on autonomy, AI and common control. There will also be a number of issues 
which will be technical, ethical, cultural and organisational barriers. So um, just before we go then, uh, that concludes the seminar. So thanks for joining us today. Um, the question questionnaire will pop up very shortly. But in the meantime, we look forward to um, welcoming you back for the next webinar, which is on military airlift, Renaissance, new players in the arena, and that's on Thursday, the 25th of January. Thanks very much. <laughs>